Do it yourself. Dynamic DNS. Today. In Mikey's lab. So welcome back to the lab. Uh, today we just have kind of a quick tip for you. Uh, I'm working on setting up a new web server on my local network here, and like most people, my ISP's IP address is dynamic. There are plenty of solutions out there for dealing with a dynamic DNS type of a situation. Most of them are paid. The ones that are free, you have to renew all the time, and it's a giant pain in the butt. So today, I'm going to show you how using the GoDaddy API, but I'm sure every registrar has an API that works similarly, how to do your own dynamic DNS. Okay, so I am running the web server for mikeyslab.info. If you go there right now, you'll see that that's the, the start of our website reboot. Uh, it's being run off of this Raspberry Pi 2 right here with an external hard drive because websites can take a lot of data, especially when I'm uploading videos. And, uh, and pictures to it. So the idea being that I want this thing to check my external IP address, check the IP address that GoDaddy has for the mikeyslab.info uh, domain name, and if it's different, I want this to update GoDaddy. It's just that simple. So we're gonna dive down to the PC, and I'm gonna show you how this is done. All right, so here we are at the, the GoDaddy interface, we're at the developer interface, since we need to create a new API key for the account that we have, you just click the create new API key button, you can name it whatever you want, it's uh, just a reminder for you later on. Uh, the key thing here is under environment, we need to make sure that we choose production, otherwise the changes we make will not go live. And it gives us the key and secret. That message at the top is not lying. Make sure that you copy this information out. Um, otherwise, it will never display it again. Um, all right, and we should always see the key that we just created in the interface right there. All right, so now we're gonna go over to the DNS records of our domain. And you can see that there is uh, only one A type. So we're gonna create a couple more A type records. Uh, for this to work, the record that you're updating needs to be A type because it points to an IP address. So we're going to set the host www to go to a slightly wrong IP address right now. And the reason that we're doing that is that we can tell if it's working. We're also going to set the time to live to 600, which is the lowest that GoDaddy allows. This will make sure that if there is a, an update, we have the shortest outage possible. And now you can see the two new A records that we'll be able to update. Alright, so here we are at the Raspberry Pi. So we've set everything up that we needed to in GoDaddy and now we need uh, something to be able to check the, the WAN IP and see if it's different from the one that we think we have. And see if it's different from the one that we think we have. So uh, the very first thing we're going to do is move over to a directory where we can store this script file. I usually put it in slash USR slash local slash uh, bin. That way it's part of the path to search for it. All right, we're going to create a file using touch here. We'll call it update dns.sh. And from here, we're going to go ahead and uh, change the access permissions right, using chmod. We're going to set execute read and write to owner only. And then we're going to use nano to edit the file. All right, so we're going to start with uh, a variable called domain, and we're going to assign dollar sign one. Now, in the Linux command line, when you're dealing with bash scripts or shell scripts, uh, the dollar sign and the number is the parameters that were passed to the script. So, if I had called update dns.sh space mikeyslab.info, then domain would equal mikeyslab.info. Uh, dollar sign two is obviously the next parameter, three, four, and so on. Um, it is very important to pay attention to white space while we're doing this, because if you had typed this domain space equals space dollar sign one, like I, my normal style is, you'll get an error. Using these variables allows us to, from external to this script, call it for whatever domain and host on that domain we wish to, 
to work with. Okay, so the very next thing we need to know is what our WAN IP is. What is our current internet IP? Uh, there is a website here that I use quite often for this and it just spits back the, your current public IP in text. So now how are we going to bring that into this script? Well, in Linux, uh, there's a command called curl, which is basically an ability to go out there and get something from a web page and bring it back into, well, we're using a dash s for, so for a string, and it will assign it to the variable for us. So that's going to give us our WAN IP. So we now know what our public IP is. All right, next thing we need to know is what the what GoDaddy thinks our IP address is. This one is a little more complicated, so paste the command and we'll go through it and dissect it piece by piece. All right, so the command's too big to fit on one screen here, so let's go to the start. So we're declaring a variable GDIP, GoDaddy IP. We're using curl once again, uh, this time in a get method and we're attaching an authorization to it. Since this is an API call to the GoDaddy API, it wants an API key in the matching secret. So we set that up as a, a header in the first quotations here, um, and we are obviously taking them from what was passed through the command line. Then we go to the api.godaddy.com, domains. Uh, we choose the domain that would specify the command line parameters. We go records, a records, and we look for the host that we want to update. So now this returns uh, a data set from GoDaddy, and we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this into uh, a terminal so we can take a look at what we are actually getting back. All right, so what I did was I went ahead and filled in the variables of this command in uh, Programmer's Notepad since doing it at the command line is hard. And if we hit enter, you see we get this thing that looks like JSON, but it isn't JSON. Um, if you look, you can see the square brackets at the beginning and the end. Several web services return this, and they still call what they, re what, what they return JSON, but it's not technically JSON. So our, our JSON parsing commands aren't going to be able to parse this. So we need to get rid of that first square bracket and the last square bracket. And if we take a look at the script, uh, we can see how we do that. So Linux has another command that's very useful at the command line, uh, cut. Uh, and the option of dash D basically takes a string and splits it on the character that is specified. And then it's followed by a parameter of dash F and a number, which is which piece to take. So if we go back to the command line that we were working with before, we can add the cut commands and see how this works. And pipe to cut, dash D, open bracket, dash F1 or two in this case. We want the second piece. And you can see that the first square bracket is now gone. So then we pipe the result once again to cut again with dash D and then the closing bracket. And then we'll choose F1 which is the first piece. If we run this we now have actual JSON that we can parse. Okay, so the next step in this is to go ahead and use our JSON parse it, our parsing tool, which is, uh, and now if we pipe that to the JQ and give us the value of dot data. Now we get just the straight IP address back, which is exactly what we were looking for. You can see it's got the wrong IP address that we gave it in the GoDaddy interface. So now we have the WAN IP and we have the GoDaddy IP. Now obviously we just need to compare them. And that's a simple if statement. Again, pay very close attention to white space when uh, working in shell scripts. Um, it really does change the behavior. And so we want to take the WAN IP value and we're going to say if it's not equal to the GoDaddy IP. Obviously at this point we want to update, but uh, there's one more condition we want to pay attention to. So we're going to go dash A for AND, and we're going to verify that the WAN IP has actually populated. So in the off chance that the curl command that got our WAN IP doesn't return a value, we don't want to update GoDaddy with a blank IP address. So again, 
if our WAN IP does not equal what GoDaddy knows and our WAN IP is not blank, we're going to update the, the IP with GoDaddy. And that is uh, another very similar curl execution, only this one's going to be a put. Alright, so we're calling pretty much the exact same API function, only this time we're sending it data. If we scroll through the curl query here, once again we're going to specifying the domain and the host, and we're doing the authorization second this time, but it's still being done. Okay, and then now we're specifying the content that we want to send to it. We're saying that it's JSON, okay, and we're sending essentially a JSON record set that says data equals what the WAN IP is. Now you can update other parameters that came down in that data set with the first query the same way. You just add them to this string or do them separately. That's all that there is to this script. And it's a very, very simple script. Um, the next stage will be for us to take a look at installing it into CronTab. Okay, so now we see that the script is definitely there. We're going to run it with Mikey's lab, www.host, and the API key and secret, and verify that it did change the wrong IP address to the right IP address on the GoDaddy website. If we hit refresh on our DNS management, you can now see that www is pointing to the correct IP address, which is obviously exactly what we wanted. All right, so now, as I said before, we need to uh, make some changes to the cron tab on this system to get this to run at specific intervals for the multiple hosts we want to use. And when you do the cron tab e, it asks what editor you want to use. And well, as we've seen so far in this video, I like nano. Now, this is always an interesting format of a command to deal with. And you either love how they did this or you hate how they did this. We will go through this in detail. Right, right now I'm just going to go ahead and paste the... Actually, no, I'm just going to type it. Right, so the first one is our minutes. So we want this to run on a minute scale. So this is going to be star slash 10, which means every time that the minute is evenly divisible into by 10, we will run this script. Uh, then we're in the next variables, hours, we're all of them, day of month, all of them, month, all of them, and day of week, all of them. And then the command to update the DNS is what we put next, which we're all very aware is the update DNS uh, script that we created previously. And then we pass it the parameters for domain we want to update, the API key and the API secret. Again, the command's just a little too long to go on my, uh, on one line of my screen here. And we want to send the output from this to dev slash null. So basically, if it chooses to output text anywhere, it just throws it to the, uh, to the null terminal because there's nothing really to do with that text. All right, so since we want to update another host, and this is why we made this, this script as flexible as we did, we can literally just add another line here. I'm going to make my life a little easier by uh, changing the size of this thing to have 160 uh, columns as opposed to the 80. All right, so now it's just a matter of copying and pasting that command and changing a couple of the, well, changing one of the variables in that command, which is the www host, and changing it to VPN. Now this will be our test because the VPN uh, subdomain still has the wrong IP address. So we're going to have to wait for uh, a minute that's divisible by 10, and this should run, and the VPN record on the GoDaddy DNS should change. And that will let us know that this is working. Obviously save. All right, looks like a minute divisible by 10 just finished. So let's go over to GoDaddy and see if the IP address has changed. And as you can see, it has. It's now 252 for the VPN. So there you have it. It is literally that simple. As I said, quick tip, just makes things nice and easy. I'm gonna be doing a couple of these uh, quick tips with things that I use Raspberry Pi for to extend my network. 
um, might be interesting for you guys. Uh, VPN server, open VPN server, I use a Raspberry Pi for. Uh, Pi hole, I use a Raspberry Pi for. All kinds of ways that I extend my network using these cheap single board computers. We will go into details on all of them. I want to thank you for joining me in the lab today. I hope you learned something, and we will speak again soon.